Salam. My name is Rahma and I'm currently a student. So I finished my exams at uni um, recently and it was a really stressful, stressful time and the end few overlapped into Ramadan. So it was really weird being alone in Ramadan. I remember one of the days I ate Sehri Sahur alone in my room and I remember all my revision books were laid out and I was trying to eat and work at the same time and I remember thinking, oh my god, this is so lonely. And it was so lonely and stressful for me because Ramadan had always been about sharing food with my family, praying together, eating together, laughing together. And it was a really odd, strange experience. And I remember feeling really down. So the next day I decided to go to the Islamic Society of Thar. Um, I couldn't face eating alone again. So I went to the chaplaincy, which is where they all broke their fast. And I was genuinely so blown away by the atmosphere and the kindness um, that was shown to me. Everyone was set together in a circle and I spoke and talked to people that I hadn't seen ever before. And I just remember thinking, okay, this is what Ramadan is about. And I really felt what I call the Ramadan vibes, which is just the love and togetherness in the air. It was so tangible and inclusive, and I felt like I was really part of something, a family much greater, and at that moment, I really felt like Ramadan had come again. And I think it's so important that we take this feeling, this atmosphere, and try and incorporate it into our Islamic societies and into our organisations, and whenever we interact with people all year round, not just in Ramadan. As people, we focus so much on divisions, and we focus on them and use them to divide us, be it our dress code, our age, our gender, or our race. And I think my generation of up-and-coming young Muslims, especially Muslim females, are noticing this more and more in our older generations, and it needs to change. To me, what I experienced at my ISOC in Ramadan fully encapsulates what Ramadan means, what Islam means, and what it is to be Muslim. I feel like in the whirlwind of life that we get swept up in, we get so caught up in the tiny, fine details, the little things which are so irrelevant when we focus on the grand scheme of life. The way my parents raised me was to focus on your spiritual connection with God, with Allah, because with that comes an awareness of how you behave and how you act. For me, Islam isn't about how much hair is showing at the front of someone's headscarf or whether they wear it at all. It's not whether the Qibla, the direction you pray, is 0.1 millimetres more to the right, which is a real argument that I've witnessed in a mosque. It's not about how much perfume that sister is wearing, whether I can or can't pray with nail polish on my fingers, whether I enter the prayer room in the same door as my brother, how many inches my skirt is off the ground, and whether I say Ramzan or Ramadan. The true, true meaning of Islam is in its name, its true submission and peace. And it's how we find peace within ourselves. It's how we give peace to each other, to our neighbours, to our friends, to our family and to the world. There is a beautiful verse in Surah Baqarah, which my mum taught me when I was really young. And it's stuck by with me ever since. So it's from chapter 2, verse 177. Righteousness is not that you turn your face towards the east or the west. But true righteousness is one who believes in Allah, the prophets and the Quran who gives wealth to relatives, the orphans, the needy and the traveller, who asks for help and establishes prayer, who gives the cat, who keeps promises and who is patient in poverty and in hardship. And those are the ones who have been true and those are the ones who are truly righteous. So of course the small details are important, but before we focus on those, we need to really ask ourselves, if we are truly righteous first, do we give our wealth freely to the travellers? Do we really help those in poverty? And do we keep every promise we make? Before we turn to other people and notice their weaknesses, we must turn to ourselves first. I'm sure many of you have heard of Dawood Wormsby Ali. Um, I grew up listening to his nasheeds. And in one of them, he states, I've been looking for answers since becoming an adult, not looking for dogma to live like a cult. I've been looking to live, I've been living to find, freedom from cages that limit my mind. We need to remember that Ramadan is the perfect time to look at the limitlessness and the openness that our faith gives us. We need to see through the narrow interpretations that limit our critical thinking and our creativity. And let's stop bickering about the minor details that we put so much emphasis on and focus on what truly unites us as Muslims together and what truly matters. Thank you.